Hey there, it's time for Dreamcatcher. I'm your host, Robin Hardin. I'm really excited about today's show. Joyce Brazil has a dream about being pruned, something that all of us need to go through on occasion, but none of us want to. Also, I have several selfies and viewer dreams. I would love to see what the Lord is saying to you. If you have a dream, send it to me in an email and allow me to help you to find peace through understanding. God is talking to you. On today's viewer segment, I'm going to share two different dreams from two different dream catchers. The first one is from Connie and she finds herself in a field of clover and yet she's in her car in this field. When she steps out of her car, she notices that the clover is about midway up her calf and then she wakes up. Well, the Lord is showing you in this dream that the field is your circle of influence and the clover, that's the origin of honey. So he's showing you that your ministry is going to produce honey. And as you stop, like in this dream, you stopped. Once you stop and you look around, you're going to see where your watering and your planting is going to bring the harvest and you're going to see the honey. The second dream is from Sandra and she dreamed that she had this large dead snake and she gave it to this other woman and it was this other woman's job to dissect this dead snake. When the other woman cuts the snake open, lots of little snakes come out of it and then she wakes up. Well, we know that typically in a dream, the snake is Satan, he's the enemy. And in this dream, the big snake is dead, but the little snakes are still there. This, the Lord is showing you that sometimes in life, it's, you get rid of the big enemy, the big attack. Like for instance, if there's a spirit of suicide on you and you're able to get prayer and be delivered through counseling and, and faith, you, you're able to get away from that. But then maybe you still suffer from fear or uh, intimidation. Those are the little snakes. So it's not enough for us to kill just the big snake, the big thing in our life, but it's those little things that can cause us a lot of damage, a lot of harm. So if you find yourself in a situation where you feel like, man, it's the little things, what am I going to do? Seek the Lord and ask Him. He'll show you what the big snake was, but also what the little ones were, because we want you totally free in the Lord. Hi, Robin. It's Elena. I'm uh, video videoing this. Um, it's not my dream, but it's my daughter's dream. Um, she dreamt about me last night, how she and my husband Jeff, her father, were in an elevator, and I don't know if they were going up and down, but it was a elevator in a house, and it had a, um, like a um, expandable fence, it was like a, a gate kind of thing that you had to shut first, and then the elevator door itself shut, and um, I don't remember if they were going up or down and um, she said that she got out of the elevator and that there was uh, a rabbit, a stuffed rabbit that was talking to her and um, because Jeff and Katie, I was not with them, Jeff and Katie were, were looking for me, they couldn't find me and then this stuffed animal um, was saying that I was dead and started mocking Katie because it said that I had been dead for like 10 years. So um, Katie took the stuffed animal, ripped its head off, and there was a microchip inside. And um, she just threw it away. She said it kept talking after she ripped its head off. And she just threw it out. <clears throat> and then she opened, um, and prior to this, she said that when they closed the door on the elevator, they saw it filling with water. And she said that there was a gauge in the elevator that represented temperature. And she said when they shut the door, coming out of the elevator, the elevator was filling with water and that it was getting hot <clears throat> and that um, it got up to 102 degrees and it was flashing danger. And um, that's when they stepped out and she saw the, the stuffed animal talking to her. And then um, they were looking around trying to find me. and. Um, 
for some reason she had opened the elevator door again and there was a glass door with the water inside and she said that I was inside of it inside of the water and that I was dead um, so I would appreciate some help on this kind of scares me um, but just let me know your thoughts on it I appreciate it thanks bye bye Elena, thank you for sending in this dream selfie. This is going to be so important for many of the viewers out there to understand. When I first saw the selfie, you entitled it Water in an Elevator or Elevator Filling with Water. And I got excited because I was assuming it was an elevator going up and there was water was the Holy Spirit. But it's important that people understand that anything that God does, that the Holy Spirit does, the devil, Satan, will and does counterfeit. And that's what this dream was. This dream was meant simply to scare your daughter. It was not meant as a warning of of godly judgment coming and therefore we need to turn from our wicked ways. This was a dream meant to terrify your daughter and to make you look bad in her sight. In the dream she and her father are in an elevator and the elevator is in a house. Well it's her dream. She's having the dream. So it's her house. The house represents her. She houses the Holy Spirit. We're the temple of God. So this is about her life and decisions that she has to make. And she obviously is close to her father, um, but the dream is not about him in particular. Both of them have choices to make in life, whether they're going to go up or down in this elevator. You don't know which one they choose because they haven't pushed a button yet. They're just in the elevator. The interesting thing is, this is an old-timey, an old-fashioned elevator with the gate that, that comes over in front. A gate is bondage. The enemy wants to put her in bondage, and he wants her to push down. She's getting to a place in her life, either physically or spiritually or both, where she's learning to think more independently and she's questioning. She's questioning what is truth and trying to figure out uh, right from wrong and what direction that she's going to go in. Well, later in the dream, you're in the elevator behind a glass wall. It's filled with water and you're dead. The enemy wants her to think that you're dead. He's using a stuffed animal, something that should bring comfort to her, something that should be a toy, something that she would usually hold, sleep with. Um, he's using something that she will hold close to her to get to her. That's how sly he is. Even after she rips it apart and she takes the um, the thing out of it that was making the noise, he's still talking because it's not it's not a man-made thing. It's it's spiritual, and that's what that's what even in the dream he's showing you that. Um, the enemy wants her to think that you've been dead for ten years. If you look back over your life, I think that you will you will see that over the past ten years you have grown in the Lord. You have become closer to the Lord, probably deeper in things of the Lord, and. The enemy uses little bits of truth to deceive us because the truth is you are dead in Christ. You are dead to sin because sin no longer has a hold on you. You are immersed in the water, the Holy Spirit. The devil's trying to take that and say that you have drowned, that you're dead, and he's mocking. So just like he did with Eve in, in the garden, he takes a little bit of truth and tries to twist it into what he wants you to believe. But look back over your life I bet you're fine in the last 10 years you've drawn closer and the enemy hates it and he's afraid of you he's afraid of the authority you have he's afraid of your power he hates that you're submersed in the Holy Spirit and he's trying to get your daughter to push down instead of up but you keep praying for her because this is a pivotal time in her life thanks for sending this in <music> So I encourage you out there, if you have a dream, send it to me. Send it to me in a video like this and uh, put someone in it with you if it's more comfortable. God's talking to you and we want to know what it is he's saying because I know you want to know. And it wasn't that scary, was it, Bambi? <laughs> <laughs> no. All right. We're looking for dreams. Thanks. Bye.
<laughs> cool. Thank you for joining us here at Dreamcatcher. I have Joyce Brazil as a guest, and many of you may recognize Joyce because she's been on the program before, but she hears so clearly from the Lord that I, I love it when you come on the program. I love it because you kind of already know what the Lord is saying to you, and I get to just confirm and, and rejoice with you. I thank you for letting me be on the show, Robin. I know that the Lord, Lord says that He will give dreams to everyone. And uh, people who do not know that they dream, they do. And if they can just ask the Lord to bring it. I mean, sometimes I will have a dream and I don't remember it. And I seek the Lord and say, I know I'm supposed to remember that dream, Lord. <laughs> and he will bring right. it back. Right. But this particular one was about a year ago. And I have seen the fulfillment of it. And that's why I wanted to tell the, the people about it. Because God was using symbolism in the dream so that I would be comfortable with what was going to happen. So what in the dream, I'm at my home, and someone comes to do the lawn and pruning. And I don't remember asking for the pruning, but they were doing it anyway. And the name of the man that came to do the lawn work is named John Willis. W-I-L-L-I-S. First name John. Means beloved. And Willis is, of course, Will is. So the Lord was showing me just in the person whom I, I know a guy named John Willis. He was showing, and he's not a lawn man, mm -hmm. but he was showing me that, beloved, my will is. Mm -hmm. And so they were doing the lawn work, and all of a sudden they started pruning all of the bushes and trees severely. And there was one particular tree that was growing out of my bathroom <laughs> window, and the window was open. I remember looking out, and they did a severe pruning of that. And... I, you know, we know what pruning is all about because the Lord says, if you bear fruit, I'm going to prune you to bear better fruit. And only by Him can we bear any fruit when we remain in the vine. And so the Lord was showing me that there was coming a season when there would be some significant pruning. And uh, sometimes it hurts. Sometimes pruning can hurt. And uh, when it was coming from the restroom or the bathroom, that's a room where you go to get cleansing. And I had been crying out, as we all do, to the Lord, show me any evil in my heart. Cleanse me. Let your word wash my hands. Bring that whatever cleansing I need, Lord. I want it. And so the Lord was showing me in the dream that, that I was coming into that season. And in this past year, I can see where there have been things that have I that the Lord has removed from my life that were common before. Right. And the Zadok priest, if you read in Ezekiel forty forty one through forty four and all of that, the Zadok priest were the ones that are invited into the presence of God. The priest who forsook holiness, they are are. They are servants in the temple, but they are not in the presence of God. And what was it about the Zadok priests? They separated the precious things from the profane. And if you look at that word profane, it means common. Well, it was common for me to look at certain things on, on TV, and then all of a sudden they started mixing it in with sexual uh, adultery. They started mixing it in with same-sex relationships and all of these things, and it became... It became profane to me at that point. And so things that I used to think, well, I just got to watch that show. Now I don't. And so the Lord was showing me that was from Him. And that was His will. He's my beloved, but He calls me His beloved. And He's the one that said, without holiness, we will not see God. My life's desire is to see God. <laughs> So uh, after the pruning was being done, and you know, and I was uh, kind of alarmed at how much I thought would those trees live, and um, then John Willis had a big sledgehammer or mallet, and he went into the, my front front area, the front door, and there was a little porch area that had two uh, columns, and he took that sledgehammer and just whammed out one of them. And was getting ready to do another one, and I woke up. Thankfully, huh? <laughs> and, and so uh, there was a support in my life that was not of God. 
and uh, I'm pretty sure I understand what that was and and that he removed it and sometimes in order to remove those things that keep us from the Lord there's a violent response but God's love for us is violent yes. his zeal and jealousy for us it's violent it's violent faith on his part that brought me out of darkness into the light and is and is pruning me so that I will bear fruit for him and so that was um, very comforting to me to know that the Lord future pays me right. on that to let me know this is my will this is what I'm doing yeah. and I take great joy that that he considers me worthy right. Right. to uh, that that in some small way I can bear enough fruit so that he's going to prune me to bear better fruit you know what I'm yeah. saying and so that was a blessing that was a blessing a little scary at the time but when I woke up, I knew from the from the name John Willis. How like God! How like my precious Lord, my Father, to give me that comfort. And and so clearly, John we know is the beloved, and Will is. I mean, how clearly he gave, he told you something uncomfortable is going to happen, but it's my will, and. I think this is such an important message to the body of Christ because we get a paper cut and we blame it on the devil. You know, every anything that we just don't think is absolutely comfortable to what we're used to, we blame on the enemy. And that's that's not scriptural. Look what Jesus went through. Look what the disciples went through. It was not an easy road for them. Why would we think it would be an easy road for us when they treated the Lord and Savior, God's Son, like they treated Him? And the Word says, when you are persecuted, when you face trials and tribulations, when. This is pruning. And pruning a good farmer, a good vineyard you know, owner, they prune. If we planted a couple apple trees and we know nothing about apple trees so we don't know how to prune them they're not doing so well once we learn how to prune them they're going to do better right. but pruning imagine if you were a, a plant and someone's coming at you with sharp things it's not comfortable it's not something we in the natural that we want you want it because the Lord says it's his will you want it because he you know it's going to help you to grow more fruit you don't want it's like we all want to go to heaven we just don't want to die to get there <laughs> you know go ahead and die <laughs> well we want to die in our sleep and we have these conditions that we want it's just not going to be that way and so many times we give the devil credit when it's not him and and we're bestowing credit I mean that's bestowing credit on him well the, the devil did this to me what we're, we're taking what God meant for us and giving the enemy the credit for it and he loves the attention he loves the attention when we focus on him and we start saying you know the devil's after me and the devil's getting me and the devil's mm -hmm. overcoming me and the devil's winning we are giving yes. we are we don't slap God in, fa in the face because we can't do that he's way above that but in our own life we are tearing down what God is yes. trying to build up because then we resist it. Yeah. We, we convince ourselves it's the enemy, and then we resist it. Mm -hmm. When all along it's the Lord. And he's talking to your spirit. Mm -hmm. So even if your brain doesn't get it at the time, when you go through, and you believe in this case you've already gone through, when you are going through it, then your spirit is flutters, you know, and, and your brain goes, oh, that's what that was. That's what that mm -hmm. was. But there's more. I mean, I, I don't even <laughs> begin to believe that yeah. that I am who God wants me to be. But He is in He's in the process of that, and His Word says that He will complete the good work that He begun. Right. And so I I take confidence in that. That if I understand right. and to have that precious dream to let me know, this season is of me. Mm -hmm. And He He warned you. And he started with pruning, which was uncomfortable, but not drastic. Mm -hmm. And then, in stages, as you, he was building character with the pruning, ma making you stronger. And after he built some strength in those vines and those branches, he's the vine. Then, John Will is 
picked up a sledgehammer or something and knocked out a foundation from your porch. Well, we know the house is you, and this is right in front. This is something right in your face. It's probably a person that has supported you or, or an, an idea or a situation that has supported you, that you've leaned on, that you've it's always been there for you. And he didn't come and slowly remove it. He he knocked it. He violently knocked something out from under you that could cause your whole front porch to fall. Um, which, you know, in, in a, your facade, your countenance, facade. you know, to come down. And that's what the Lord showed me, that, that he didn't come against the house unless the Lord builds the house. We built it in vain. But it was a facade. And we don't want any facade in our life to hold back what the Lord is doing. So that was uh, and the tree, you know, coming from your bathroom because that's where you're being purged from. Sometimes dreams sound so crazy, and yet there's real deep meaning there. But I mean, it looks like you've made it, <laughs> you've survived it. <laughs> but it, you know, that means God loves us enough that He knows He expects more from us. And because he's pruning, he's expecting more. And when he knocks out that pillar, what are you going to do? You're going to go to him. Because it's very easy for us to have someone in our life that we go to. I was thinking about the three Hebrew children. You know, they always had, they always had Daniel there with them. Mm -hmm. Daniel was always there. Well, where was Daniel when they were being thrown in the fire? He wasn't there. And all of a sudden, they had a pillar knocked out. And these, uh, we believe they were teenage boys that go, okay, our pillar's not here, but, but God is our pillar. And that's what he's saying to you. He puts people in our lives, obviously, to help us. But we have to know that he is our pillar. He's the one. Yeah. And he's given us everything, Robin. Oh. He is yeah. not withholding right. any good thing right. from us. Right. And when Jesus said, the works that I've done, you will do, and even greater works, right. it's because that there's a unity as we come together. It's not one person going into a crowd of people who need healing. Mm -hmm. It's a whole group of people right. going into thousands yeah. of, of people that need to be delivered and yes. set free and need to, to know yes. who their Savior is. And so it's, I, I can't imagine doing greater works, but we do greater works because we are a congregation right. of believers that God has called to do the same works that Jesus did. Right. He's our model for everything. And he did nothing except what he heard the Father tell him to do mm -hmm. and what he saw the Father doing. And so that's part of the dream language is that we can see. <laughs> and yes, God wants yes. us to exercise and live in that seer realm as well as hearing. Mm -hmm. And Jesus blessed our ears. He said, blessed are your ears to hear. They will hear. Yeah. Blessed are your eyes. They will see. He was opening that realm up for us. Right. If you're a believer, you have that realm opened up by the eternal words of the Lord Jesus Christ when he said, blessed are your ears. They hear. Yes. Blessed are your eyes. They see. He was bringing us into relationship to be who he was, to do the things that he was doing. We have it all. Amen. We just have to Amen. get to that place of believing it and not uh, negating it right, right, with our own language. Right. Because that's why he does it in our sleep. Because we're not watching TV. Right. We're not distracted. We can't say, oh, is that him or was that this? Or push it aside. We've gotten really good of pushing every thought that's him, pushing it aside, calling it the devil, calling it pizza, <laughs> you know, <laughs> calling it, blaming it on something else that's when right. it's him. He's yeah. talking to us. And he's not just talking to Joyce, and he's not just talking to me. He's talking to you in dreams as you sleep. That's Job thirty-three fifteen. That's his word. So listen to what he's saying, and I encourage you. When things aren't going well, seek the Lord. It isn't always the enemy. You may be being pruned. You may even be getting ready to have a, a pillar knocked out from underneath of you, but that is so that you lean on him. And I truly believe, Joyce, that the... The more persecution, the more hardship that he allows us to go through is to prepare us for a bigger blessing. So yeah. I just believe God has something really exciting in store for you. I amen. really do. I'm amen. looking forward to it. <laughs> yeah, amen. Thanks for sharing.
Thanks. Thank you so much, Robin. I love your show. I, I know that a lot of people watch it and get information and understanding. You say understanding. Peace through understanding. I love that. Because the understanding comes from the Lord, and he's speaking to us. And if you you and I are talking, we want the other one to know what we're saying. Right. He's the same way. He wants Amen. us to know what he's saying. And he wants you to know what he's saying to you. So if you're having a dream, send me your dreams, and, and let me help you to find peace through understanding. Thanks so much. God bless you. Walking, talking, debating, and arguing with God is a lighthearted collection of short stories depicting some of Robin's real-life experiences and testimonies. You'll laugh and cry as Robin shares her plight of being the new kid year after year. Take a trip along Robin's spiritual journey, which she describes as straight and narrow and straight up the side of a mountain. The three-book series is now available at Amazon.com. It's important that we understand whose voice we're hearing. That's discernment. We know the Lord speaks to us in dreams, but the enemy, that Satan, sometimes comes in. He invades our dreams as well. And sometimes you get a dream from the Lord that's a little disturbing because he's showing you something that could happen if, if certain, you know, certain things don't change in your life. But sometimes a scary dream is simply not from God. It's from the enemy. So it's important that we know whose voice we're hearing. If you're having trouble with that, ask the Lord. His word says, if we need wisdom, all we have to do is ask him. He wants you to know. He says in the book of Daniel that he's speaking to us and he wants us to know what he's saying. So ask him, Lord, is this from you or is this from the enemy? Because a lot of times we rebuke the enemy and it's from the Lord. And then other times we think, oh, these doors are closing because it's the enemy. And it's very easy to get it confused. But God speaks clearly. Pray that you can hear and that you can see spiritually clearly so you know whose voice it is you're hearing. It's physically exhausting, it's emotionally and spiritually exhausting, but it, I love it. Robin's transparent style comforts and soothes during personal ministry. So I know your interpretation is right on. You, you brought it out mm -hmm. for me to see. You hit the nail right on the head. <laughs> you know what I That's mean? That's good. That's good. <laughs> Keep doing what you're doing. It was amazing. I loved it. Thank you. To schedule Robin, visit www.eechoes.com. I hope you were encouraged by Joyce's dream. You know, none of us even like the idea of being pruned, but it makes us a better person. God knows what he's doing. And he's not just doing this for Joyce. He wants to prune all of us. And he's talking to all of us in our dreams as well. I would love for you to send me a dream and see what it is the Lord is saying to you. Join me next time. We have lots going on, and I know God wants to teach you.